This is going to be part two of Linux Fundamentals. If you have not watched part one, please go watch it because we're going to be building off of everything we learned for part one and be using that in part two as well. Part one, we learned about LS, CAT, PWD, who am I, grep, CD. If that sounds strange to you, then you more than likely have not understood part one yet. So I do recommend going back and watching my video or actually reading it or doing both. With that being said, let's continue. Let's do Linux Fundamentals Part 2. My name is Fab. This channel is all about tech and cyber. Let's get into it. So as you can see, I already have it all set up. I already have the Linux machine running. I already did the OpenVPN and I'm going to be SSHing into the IP address. If you do not understand what I'm talking about, I also have a video of how to use OpenVPN and how to SSH into it for those un not understanding what I'm talking about. With that being said, let's continue on to the actual Linux Fundamentals Part 2. So, task three, we're going to be learning about flags and switches. So we're going to be doing the help command and we're going to be doing the man command. LS is obviously for listing what you have. There's two ways to see the additional switches that you have for any commands. So you can do the man ls commands and it'll show you all the switches you could do. It shows you what to do and more. It's the manual. So there's a bunch of explanations. It's, it's very long, but if you're looking for a simple, quick thing on what switches to use, you could use the command and you do dash dash help. And it's the same exact thing. It looks weird here because I have to expand this. So if I do it again, it looks better. There we go. So it's the same exact thing. It's just an easier kind of way to understand it. It's not as much, but if you do need it, then you, it's better to use the manual. Play with both, see which one works better for you. I typically use the help command instead of doing the man command, but sometimes you do need the man command because you need the additional information that you need. Let's clear that. So I already answered it because my mic cut out, but anyways, what directional key would you use to navigate the man page down? So on the man page, there's a couple ways to go down. So if you click the down arrow, you can go line by line. You can also click the enter arrow. You can go line by line. Or if you click the space bar, it goes page by page. And then it says, what flag would you use to display the output of the human readable way? So for this, if you're trying to do LS, tack dash dash help and find where it says human readable way, or a simpler way, what we learned in part one is the grep command, which is one of the most common and the most beneficial command to use. With that being said, we're going to grep this right here, human readable way. So we're going to do the command, which is ls help. Then we're going to pipe it and we're going to do grep. And we're going to look up human because of human readable way. I can write the whole thing up, but it's the same thing. Enter and then right there, it comes out in red of what it found. Tag gauge right there. So that's task three. Moving forward to task four. Task four is we're going to be using the find command touch, make directory, copy, move, remove, file. So the touch command is to easily make files, not directories. If we do ls right now, all we have is important, my file, my folder, unknown one. So if we do touch, note, and then I do ls, as you can see, we made it a new file, note. There's many ways to make files, but this is just a simple, quick way to, to make a file. I personally like to use Nano, which is a text editor. I'll show you later. I'm pretty sure Nano's on this, this task. Now it'll be on part three. Anyways, moving forward, since we made note with touch to make a file and to make a directory, we're gonna use the mkdir, which is make directory. And we're gonna name it folder one. Do ls now, and then we have a folder one and we have a note one. Moving forward, we have the rm. So if you want to remove a file, all you do is click rm note. If you do ls, the note is gone, as you can see. But rm, it will, it'll delete anything if it's a file and if there's nothing in it. If there's something in it, it won't let you do it unless you put an additional flag. In this case, you can do this, the dash R. So if I try doing remove folder one, it says, can I remove folder one? If I do remove dash R folder one, if I do LS, now folder one is removed. So if you ask yourself, what is dash R? Easiest way to find out is RM dash dash help. Scroll up, of course, it's gonna look weird again because of this, do it again, okay. So it means recursive, it removes directories and their contents recursive. So, so it's saying like, are you sure you wanna delete it? Yes, I'm sure to delete it. That's basically what the R does. We're gonna continue here. 
the copy command, it's basically, it's, it's what it sounds like. You're copying and pasting it somewhere else. You can copy and move it somewhere else. You can copy or you can change the name. We're gonna make the file again, note. So we have it there, note. We're gonna copy CP, note. So the source of it is note. And what we want to change it to, destination, is gonna be note two. Now if we do LS, now we have note and note two. So as you can see, we copied it, we pasted it as well, but we changed the name of it. And the move commands, instead of copying, pasting, we're moving it. So we're also just changing the name or moving the place. Instead of having two files of the same one, we're gonna have one file just moving it somewhere else. So if I do MV, which is move, note two, source destination, note three, LS. Now we have no more note two, all we have is note three and note from the, from the copy command, the original one. Moving forward, we have file. So the file command is just an easy way to know what kind of file it is. So if I do file, if I do file note, it just can't tell me it's empty. If I do file my file, it's gonna tell me what's inside of it. So inside of it's gonna be ASCII text. Now to the questions, how would you create a file named new note? Well, to create a file, we use the touch command. So touch new note. So if we go over here, ls, we already have it. So we'll remove it. No, we're gonna do touch, no, ls, there it is. On a deployable machine, what is the file type of unknown one and try hack me home directory? We're already here, so we're on to the file type. So to know the file type, you use the file, unknown one, and it's gonna be ASCII text. How will we move the file, my file, to the directory, my folder? Since we're moving it, we're gonna move the my file, and we're gonna move it to the my folder. I spelled my wrong, of course. So over here, if I do ls, we have the my file, change directory, my folder, we're gonna see what's in my folder, there's nothing in my folder. So with that being said, let's go back. We're gonna do move my file, and then we're gonna move it to my folder. We do ls, my file is gone, as you can see, it's not there anymore. And we're gonna change directories to the my folder. If I do ls, then you see my file is in my folder. If you don't understand what ls, change direct, CDs, all that, then you haven't really understood part one and go back to it, really get a firm understanding because LS, CD, grab, cat, those are very, that's the foundation. Like you need to understand those to do anything else in this. It's the only way to really move across Linux. All right, moving forward, what are the contents of this file, of my folder? Again, it's from part one with the cat it. So we're gonna print it, what's going on. So print my file, THM, that's the flag we have to use, THM file system. So we're gonna copy this, paste it, correct, continue, okay, boom. We're gonna to go to task five. Task five is gonna be about permissions. We're gonna be using LS and we're gonna be understanding what is L and H, the other switches. So if we do LS, tac, tac, H, or help. I keep forgetting about this, sorry. Do it again. So in here, they're gonna use the L and the H. So the L stands for, use a long list of format and the H is human readable. So if we go back, as you can see, LS is showing us that way. If we do ls, tac l, you can also do this way or the way they do is like this. It's gonna show us a list of it and it's gonna also show us the permissions. So here, you, as you can see, there is read, write, and no execute. Moving forward, we can switch users. So we can switch users to user two. So if I do switch user, user two, it's gonna ask for the password. I'm not sure what the password is. If I try, try hack me, Let's see if it lets me, authentication fails. Anyways, on the deployable machine, who is the owner of important? So to see the owner of important, again, we're gonna use the LS, tac L, it's gonna list it. Again, this is very annoying. I'm gonna just leave it like that. If we do that, the owner of important is user two. What would the command be to switch the user to, to user two? Again, we just learned that, switch user, user two. Now switch to user two, the password is user two. There you go. So let's switch it, user two. Password is user two. Now we're in the user two. See, we left try hacking at Linux and now we're in user two at Linux. So we're in the home slash try hacking directory. What is the outputs of the contents of folder? So if I do LS, the output of important, sorry, important. So we're gonna do cat important and it's try hack me su underscore user two. So now we're gonna learn about common directories. So these, you probably won't be using very often, but it's just very important directories that you must know what are in it. 
not like you're going to be using them often, but it's good to know what they're, what's in it. So we have the Etsy command or et cetera commands. We have the var logs, which is like logs and stuff like that with the root command, which is the system information and like the root information. And then we have the temp folder, which is like temporary RAM cache, stuff like that. What is the directory path that we would expect logs to be stored in? So again, it's going to be the slash var slash logs. What's similar to RAM and how computer works? Again, it's temporary, so temp. Name the home directory of the root user. The home directory is the root. And now apply the rings, okay. An easy way to go back to your other user, just click exit, and now you're back in this. If you hit exit again, then you will be leaving your SSH, so don't do that, just do it once. If you wanna look into these folders, there's not much you could see. CD space backslash, and this is the root. Whenever you see this backslash, this is the root directory. This is the home directory, this is the root directory. So if I do LS here, you can see all of these. So the temp folder, or we can look at the, the root folder, or we can look at var folder, which change directory var ls, and it has all of these. We can look at the log one, so we can change directory ls, and this is everything in the log folder. Stuff that we don't need at the moment, but just a good way to familiarize yourself with the Linux directories. And if you just click CD, you're going back to your home directory, as you can see. Conclusions and summaries. Okay, we're done here. Done there, done there. All right, guys, I hope this helps. Part two is a little more in depth, but I still do believe that part one is still more important than part two, in my opinion, because part two was just adding on top of it. But part one is really you need to understand how to use these commands to navigate the Linux directory. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed part two. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Stay tuned for part three. It will be coming out soon and peace.